Welcome to the MSDW Podcast. I'm Jason Gumpert, editor at msdynamicsworld.com. On this episode, we are talking to Malin Donoso Martinez, a Microsoft MVP based in Norway. Malin has worked in the Dynamics CRM and Dynamics 365 CE space for several years and has recently become one of the experts in Dynamics 365 Human Resources, which is formerly known as Talent. With a preview of documentation for the 2020 Wave 1 release now publicly available, this was a perfect time to speak uh, to Malin. We discuss the new features and why they may or may not be relevant to a market like Norway. Uh, she also explains how Dynamics 365 HR fits in alongside products like Finance and Operations, which has its own HR module, Project Service Automation, Power Automate, and more. She also tells us about her work to learn Dynamics 365 for marketing and uh, some of the other things she's looking forward to. All right. Well, uh, Malin, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me. And uh, as we were, uh, were just commenting before we started officially here, um, we're, we're talking just after the release notes for 2020 Wave 1 of uh, Dynamics 365 and the Power Platform have just been sort of revealed to the world. Um, yes. As an MVP, you've known about many of these things for for longer, and um, which is great because I'm I'm really eager to um, to learn a little more, not just about uh, what's brand new, but sort of your overall outlook on on the human resources product as it's now called, which is even that still a pretty new uh, <laughs> a pretty new thing. Um, yeah. <laughs> So, well, <laughs> we, let's work our way sort of from the most recent to the more, maybe more general and, and start with the um, the release notes that were revealed today. Um, you've written a little bit about it and it sounded like, um, and we'll put a link obviously to uh, to what you've uh, written, but my my overall take on what you what you stated was that there's some very exciting things coming and some of them are less less uh, less interesting. They're more maybe just <laughs> incremental or and some are just totally irrelevant to, to your own work. Yeah, because some of them are, well, the, the benefits parts is not really relevant for the Norwegian market. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have very specific leave and absence rules as well. So most of what came in this release really wasn't that interesting for for me in the Norwegian market as well. Are those going to be some things like, I, I understand what you're saying there, uh, and I'm just thinking, are, are, are a lot of those capabilities going to be like specific to almost every country or even just even regions within countries? Is that, uh, or, or is some of it fairly universal to other, do you think, to other places? I think a lot of the leave and absence rules are very specific to each country. Because mm -hmm. uh, I know, I, I've talked to HR departments which were based in in all of Scandinavia, and there were differences between what you could register, for example, in the Norwegian, Swedish, and then Danish market, and there were some things that were, you were obligated to uh, to register in one country that were not legal in another country, okay. and that's just in the Scandinavia. And I know there are even bigger differences when it comes to the U.S. and Norway. Oh, sure. I mean, I could just imagine yeah. every country has its own, has so many different rules, unions and um, yeah, you know, work yeah. rules and, and, yeah, all sorts of things. Yeah. Um, and, it, and, I, and, yeah. I, and I know the finance and operations or uh, finance and supply chain management, uh, I know they have a lot of country-specific rules. Yeah, and certainly. I'm, I mean, yeah. you mean you mean on just on the on the HR side of things? No, no, in in the the, the finance yeah, section. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, tax and, rules and, and I, I, yeah, and yeah, just all the crazy. And I, I'm I'm looking forward to when HR is there. Yeah, I but, mean, yeah. What I've seen, yeah, I was thinking the same thing because, and what you seem, what it seems like you tend to see with those ERPs is, is that partners in these different places will often build out a custom module or uh, yeah. an extension or, or whatever right to suit the product to represent those those needs in that in that country that they work in now you know it's a way of helping sell more you know that they can sell yeah. a product in that in that locale um, do you see that being yeah. a possibility for HR 
Oh yeah, and I and I've said to every European partner in Norway that the first uh, partner that um, makes a flow for the the long time absence, uh, the the sick leave, because you have rules that in two weeks you have to do this, and in a month you have to do this, mm-hmm. and and set up these meetings with the person and with her doctor, and it's just crazy. And the first person that does this could easily sell this to a lot of companies hmm. and you could do that in a flow or power automate and just integrate it with uh our uh, government that um uh, knob uh, and um yeah but nobody no taker so far <laughs> not yet okay no. um and then i guess the uh so there's there's that part of it and then there were certain features that you listed but you said were not all that interesting that maybe is it because they were just sort of incremental improvements um uh, yeah and and again not relevant because not relevant. the, the mm-hmm. benefit yeah the benefits in norway you, you just keep in order that you've signed them up for the uh, with the another company and the other company takes care of everything so it's really not that big of an issue in the Norwegian market. Okay. Uh, yeah. But but the major thing was and that one of the biggest asks I've gotten for a long time is when is every entity in the CDS? And that was the yeah. the, the biggest part of the entire release plan that yes, finally they have now said that before or September twenty twenty then every entity is in the CDS. Now, I read that, and um, I thought to myself, I, th- I thought that that was one of the sort of imp- imp- important selling points of, you know, when, talent, yeah. when it was called talent, that the whole application was built using the CDS as a back end. Um, that's yeah. what they used to say anyway. And so when I saw that, from, <laughs> and I saw it in the release notes too, and I saw it in your, in your blog post, I thought, well, what's what does that really mean? Does that mean that? Uh, <laughs> do you do you know? <laughs> yeah, because attract and onboarding were uh, built on the CDS, so they were um, on the CDS from the start. But the core HR part, which came from finance and operations or AX, that's not built on the CDS, and they have taken some parts of it, and they're continuing to work with getting every entity over to the CDS. Because now they're in, and I haven't quite found the terminology for this, but they're in the same kind of database like the finance and operations is. But I don't think the finance and operations flow connector works with talent. I think that will fail. So you have to have every entity in the CDS to be able to build flows in Power Automate. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so it was yeah. par- partially true. <laughs> right. Okay. Just two two out of the three apps were in, in the CDS. I see. Okay. Well, yeah. Thank you for yeah. clarifying that. I've never felt like I got a <laughs> great answer on it. Um, and that whole, um, what you also mentioned, I mean, the, the idea that some of these capabilities have come, came from AX or, or D365FO, um, but they're not, but this isn't, uh, but it's not part of it anymore um, has always been a little confusing to me. And I, I mm-hmm. didn't want to take up too much time with this, but can you talk a little bit more to sort of help, help understand sort of what a, what the role of this HR product is sitting, let's say next to, uh, you know, yeah. finance and operations uh, is the, is this our, our finance and operations c- customers still using HR capabilities within their their own product, or are they now looking to the the dedicated HR product? Well, I I know that a lot of companies are still using using the HR module within finance and operations, or or it's split as well mm-hmm. now, so it's either finance or it's supply chain management. Uh, but moving forward, the new stuff will come in HR and not be developed in the finance or in the ERP side. Yeah. So they didn't lose those modules. No, no, no. Mm. They're they're still there. 
and, and and that's a good thing because you need to to have uh, the connectors and you do uh, project accounting and you do your hours well sure yeah and everything in uh, in finance so you need to have the connection there and that's why you have the the data connector from HR to finance um, so okay uh, are there other sort of touch points to to talent or HR that are particularly important um, or that have been, I don't know, maybe re particularly relevant when you have talked to customers or talked to prospects um, ab about it? Yeah, actually, um, me and um, uh, the Finnish MVP, Antti Pajonen, mm -hmm. uh, we've talked a lot because uh, him and I, we focus on uh, completely different parts of Dynamics 365. So he's interested in the stuff that I'm not interested in, and vice versa. So we, because uh, he's uh, on PSA and project and uh, field service, and I'm not there, and I'm on marketing and HR. And so we've talked a lot together because, okay, in PSA or in project, you need the competency and in field service as well. You need competency. And where is the competency of your people? They're in HR. There should be a link there. Right. As of the day, there aren't. So there there I, I think when you see the complete dynamic stack together and when you understand the vision for Microsoft that is okay, every app could be connected and everything is connected in your company. So of course your HR solution should be Microsoft because then it easily connects to your uh, finance where you do your project um, accounting and, um, and that should also be connected to your project uh, or your project service automation for staffing up your uh, people and your CRM database and your field service people with their competency and your marketing and everything just fits together. And it's, it's a really good way of thinking because you deplete all the silos that you have had earlier where your customer service is uh, there and they're just in their own bubble and HR is a group of people that uh, work in Excel and nobody talks together and nobody has complete overview of everything and now you just smack all the insights projects and Power BI on top of this and you suddenly have complete view over your uh, business. So exciting times to come. Yeah, certainly. Um, <laughs> all right, excellent. Well, and that and and, and I can certainly see uh, see what, see what you're saying that there's there's a, a ton of possibilities there. Um, maybe we could spend. I had um, meant to touch on this, and I, and I actually s s saw just before we started talking that um, that you've also done a little bit of writing even just today um, about what's coming in another area that you are focused on, which is the Dynamics 365 marketing application. Um, yeah. So I thought maybe I, I, you could tell us a little bit about your first impressions of um, what's new and changing there, and um, I don't know, maybe what you're most excited about. Yeah, because I've just started looking into uh, Dynamics Marketing, because my, my background is in marketing and my education, and that's what I was supposed to do. So I, I, I had a bit of a fail with the previous marketing solution for Microsoft. You mean, the, was, you mean the you um, mean the the marketing pilot acquisition? Um, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, which was quite horrible, <laughs> actually. Not, not a success, uh, I would say. And uh, no, and I, I I completely understand why it wasn't a success because it it was it was yeah, um and so I've been kind of reluctant and I've been working with Click Dimensions uh, for yeah since 2014 and. I think it's a great system and I've just been waiting for 
Dynamics Marketing to become a good enough system so that I want to dedicate my time with it. Because right. it takes a lot of time to keep up to date and to test out everything and uh, everything. But um, it's, uh, it's it's getting there. Uh, I think it's becoming um, a very good s- system now. Um, you think Microsoft so, so, is, uh, is, is pushing it forward at, a, at a, a, a pace that gives you confidence? Yeah, without a doubt. They, there are some, some good things coming. And I, I know I, I'm really excited for dig, digging into the event management hmm. uh, part of it all. Because that's a field where Click Dimensions doesn't have anything. Or they have some integrations with Eventbrite, but it's it's not a good a good choice if you're big on event marketing. And I've uh, I've worked with event marketing myself or event management. So I have a lot of experience and I know the pains that come with a, a bad system for the event. It takes so much time. And I, I see there they've done some great things in this release with the um uh, the, the form registration that you can create it easier with a drag and drop and you can embed it in your, your CMS uh, system. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, I think, yeah. Uh, I'm, not, I'm noting that you, you, you noted the improvements to email content design to event management experience um, and then, you know, a preview of contextual email messages. Can you talk about yeah. that? Yeah. I'm I'm quite because um, they always use extremely fancy wording and they describe it in a high level. So I, I try with these when I write about the release notes to just write it in a plain, mm-hmm. understandable English. <laughs> yeah, Tra- translating uh, <laughs> Microsoft English into yeah, uh, it's. It, it takes some time to, and and I'm, I, I I'm not completely sure that I understand it fully, because you can send context-rich personalized email messages triggered by business transactions such as purchases, returns, payments, and more. So, what I think yeah. it means it could be it could be a lot of things, huh? Yeah, context-rich and. Yeah, and how you do it, and because I, I know some people have been asking for the uh, the quick send that you can just okay here you have a template and you can just say um, you you're in this contact and you just say oh I, I want to quick send them an email based on mm-hmm. this template and it's it's lacking so but I don't know if it's that or because they, they, they specifically say triggered by business transactions. So is that yeah. connected to your ERP your system or your sales? Because payments, where is that registered? ERP, purchases, is that retail or is that in sales or customer service? It's, it could be a lot of things. Yeah, I suppose it could be almost any sort of business <laughs> event, uh, maybe maybe as tracked through CDS. Um, yeah, so, to, so it's, to trigger it's, things and, and use yeah. that to, and use the related data within the context of the emails. Yeah, so maybe you can have a customer journey saying that okay, you have purchased something. Okay, that's the start of your journey, and then depending on uh, what's the next transition, if it's return, if it is payment. If yeah. it is, uh, and, um, yeah, you could uh, send out uh, a Forms Pro now from the next release um, to ask uh, how what they feel about the product, and yeah, but I don't know. It's uh, it sounds fancy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is just a preview, also, so it's uh, yeah, it, it's something that yeah, I, I, I guess you'll be paying paying uh, attention to yeah. uh, once yeah, it's and, once it's but, out. Yeah, but, but and. and to, to other things because the export data to Excel uh, further analysis, I, I thought that was already there. 
So I was kind oh, of, because okay. I've just started digging into marketing and just looking into it. So I haven't done that much yet, but uh, Excel is still a great tool. And of course, it's great that Forms Pro is finally <laughs> supported. Right, sure. Yeah, I can certainly see that for like a marketing tool to be able to sort of either modify lists or change certain, I don't know, change values yeah. of certain contacts or, comp I don't know, I could see that being valuable. Yeah. Um, all right, great. Um, so, and like you said, you maybe we could talk a little more about your, your background because you mentioned you started yeah. out with a marketing background and, and um, for anyone who's listening who doesn't know, we, 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 we wrote about you uh, last year um, after you got your MVP award. We did a little sort of profile yeah. about who you were and um, <laughs> you explained this in, the, in that piece to our, um, to our writer, but um, you, 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 were, you, you studied marketing and then it sounds like you entered sort of the Dynamics uh, CRM space as a, as a Dynamics CRM professional, um, but yeah, not specifically I, I actually, marketing, right? No, I actually started out uh, because when when I finished school uh, some time ago, <laughs> I could say that in 2007, uh, the world of marketing was quite different mm -hmm. than it is today, uh, to, to say the least. Um, and it was hard as a newly educated person to get to get any job in marketing. So I did some sales and I did some customer service and event management. So I've, I've been into all of the, I've, I've lived the work life to say that. Um, and at my, uh, in 2014, I, I got into consulting. Uh, started off by um, first as a customer implementing Dynamics uh, CRM as it was actually called that time, and to the, uh, CRM 2011, we started in 2012. And in 14, I found out that, okay, I should just be a consultant. Right. Uh, or I was headhunted by two companies saying, Could, don't you maybe want to become a consultant? And I was like, well, obvious. well if you say so, I'll try it out. So I just took the plunge and thought that, if this isn't it, I could always go back. And um, I love it. I think it's great because uh -huh. I, I do sales, customer service, the, the power platform and marketing and human resources. And so I get to do no day are the same, to say the least. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Um and you, you also spoke about how that you were you were working on the product and that you um, you know, like took a leave for for uh, maybe a year or so or a little less. And when you came back, the product had almost completely completely changed <laughs> from what you had last been been seeing. How 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 was that transition yeah. for you? And how, how much time did it take to sort of get um, get into the, the new the newest uh, version? It was hard because I uh, when I got pregnant, I got very sick so i i puked for nine months and was hospitalized oh, no. yeah uh, so i was totally out of mm -hmm. everything uh, and then when you get a new baby that takes time and in norway we have really good um leave periods for, for moms and dads uh, so i was away for quite some time and as i said when i came back it they were no longer called CRM, so I wasn't that in the CRM department, and CRM was now Dynamics 365, which was really strange, or customer engagement. Um, and it was just so hard to, I've, I've never felt so stupid before or after, just coming back and, okay, there are so many new things coming out, and the everything is just different and I've missed so many releases and I'm just overwhelmed with everything I need to really learn all over again uh, so, so it took quite some time um, but um, yeah it's um, 2017 uh, I came back um, in August Okay. Uh, 
and yeah. And so uh, and yeah. I became an MVP in July two thousand nineteen. So. Yeah, I think it, so. I'm just thinking back to what what 2017 was like for the products. They were just getting to the point where they were beginning six month releases just after yeah. that. I think maybe was it? Did those start yeah. in 2018? I think so. Yeah. So yeah. So you were getting back in uh, into the product right when it was accelerating almost, um, or it yeah. probably had already started before <laughs> that, um, yeah. and they were putting some order to it at that point. <laughs> um, yeah, with, and because because you had the the 2015 and the serum, I since I I can't remember. I, I've completely <laughs> forgotten everything from that period. <laughs> <laughs> Sound like okay, 2011, 2013, I know, <laughs> <Yeah>. and dynamics. <laughs> I, I, I know what you mean. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you know, with this, uh, well, I really appreciate you you coming on to, to talk about about some of this this new stuff. Um, the HR is, is really interesting to me. I have to admit, I've had a hard time getting a, a good understanding of really what this product is all about from Microsoft and from, you know, I'm I'm not getting a great sense. Um, this has been one of the most educational, you know, half hours I've had to understand what, <laughs> <laughs> where, what the product's all about and, and where it's going. I mean, uh, I'm really right. interested to see how it competes, how some, some, you yeah. know, how customers succeed with it and if it gains traction in the marketplace. Um, cause it is fascinating and I know it's, but it's a whole, you know, HR and H human capital management and, and whatever the other terms are is a whole sector um, of, of enterprise software. And so there's just so much out there. Um, it's really, yeah. so it's something I'm trying to understand better. Um, and I imagine you'll have a good eye on that too, as we go on. So um, I'll keep reading your blog yeah, and I, maybe I'll, yeah. maybe I'll ping you in another year when I'm lost again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to do that. And, and of course uh, I'm, I'm always um, looking to find uh, questions because that's how I create my blog posts. I write about the things that I wonder about myself and the findings I do myself. And I know there's so many people with questions and feel free to send them to me because I'll be happy to answer them. That's, um, I, I love to, to write a blog post about something someone asked me about because then I know at least one person is very happy with the answer <laughs> <laughs> yeah certainly um well uh i think with that we can uh, anything else you wanted to add do you have any, anything else in particular going on that uh maybe you wanted to call attention to before we uh before we end things here yeah well there, there are some uh, some events coming up because mm -hmm. uh, one of the things i love absolutely the most about uh, the microsoft tech is the Microsoft community and the incredible and amazing people out there sharing their knowledge and having user groups and summits and meetings and everything. So in Oslo, we have uh, the 5th of February, uh, we have a user group meeting uh, a full day at the Microsoft office. Uh, and you of course have the epic and amazing Scottish summit uh, in 29th of February with uh, 900 people signed up for the event. Has that really for become an day. international event? Yeah, that, that's, I, I think it's over 100 uh, speakers uh, f from, well, obviously not from Scotland, all of them, but uh, all over the world. And It's a great name I for an event too, the Scottish Summit. Yeah, Scottish Summit. It's just uh, going to be one of the greatest events for this year already, I think. <laughs> so um, Ian and Mark has done a, an amazing job uh, setting it up and finding event location. Because you have to find location for 900 people. And that's, um, that's a lot of planning. <laughs> yeah, that gets into as you as I'm sure you know from your event planning days. You're that's right. That's a that's a pretty big number that you have to yeah. plan at a certain scale, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, and and they've done such a great job for us speakers. We have uh, connected and 
oh, they're they're just so great. I'm I'm looking forward to it. My first visit is to Scotland as well, so looking forward to it. Right, excellent. Great. Well, uh, well, Malin, thank you so much for for taking the time here. Um, we'll keep we'll keep reading your uh, your posts and now uh, keep asking your questions and hopefully yeah. everyone else <laughs> will too. <laughs> thank you so much for having me, Jason. This has been another episode of the MSDW podcast. My thanks to Malin Donoso Martinez for joining me today. If you want to learn more about what she is covering, please do check out her blog, MalinDonosoMartinez.com. We'll put a link to it in the description. As always, this is MS Dynamics World signing off.